So yesterday I did a deep dive that's now going viral on why I think that the Blake Lively beef with Justin Baldoni doesn't really have so much to do with him and everything to do with her being out of her depth as a dramatic actor. Please, please watch that video before you comment here because that video is actually about how we can both acknowledge Blake's emotional truth and also realize that she might be the problem. But I just wanted to add two things really quick. And yes, I will be referring to my notes. So I mentioned how intimacy coaches were indeed present for filming. So as an actor, making a nebulous accusation such as holding a kiss for too long, especially in a movie where, again, the entire point is about power dynamics is really tricky because then to a certain degree you're not only accusing Justin of being unprofessional right you're also accusing the intimacy coaches of being somewhat inept multiple followers have sent me a link to an interview now where we know that indeed they did have intimacy coaches but for certain scenes Blake insisted on being her own intimacy coach in that interview she also acknowledges out loud that that is not how it should be for your information so who is unprofessional here is it Justin is it the intimacy coach is not doing their job or is it you when you self-appointed yourself as the intimacy coach I can't begin to articulate how shady of a situation this is professionally because to appoint yourself as the safeguard of professionalism and protection so that you can then accuse somebody else of unprofessionalism and making you uncomfortable that is like appointing yourself the sheriff and arresting people there's no objectivity there which is already part of the problem with accusing somebody of holding a kiss for too long this is yet another part of the contextual pattern that we're seeing and going back to what I've been saying about Blake Lively perhaps just not having the necessary training and capacity as a dramatic actor to handle these uncomfortable not unsafe but uncomfortable realities of the sensitive nature of intimate scene work. But again, and you really have to watch my previous video before this to understand the context, but as an actor at a certain point, self-consciousness is narcissism because on a professional set, insecurity is a lack of trust and it is the opposite of good faith collaboration with a scene partner. It, it, it's essential. So the whole intimacy coach thing is wild. When you take things personally, you are out of character because you are projecting your own sense of insecurity into the work. In a very weird meta way, and actors will understand this, accusing somebody else of being unprofessional because they were lingering on a kiss for too long, perhaps maybe because you were not able to get into character, is in and of itself unprofessional. But I saw a creator make a banger point that makes so much sense here because it's so consistent with this bigger picture that we're seeing of Blake's lack of understanding when it comes to dramaturgy. Because not only do we still not have real evidence of any abuse or unprofessionalism, but for people trying to remain objective and especially those who have experience in the industry, it still didn't seem like it made sense. There still has to be more to the story of why she felt so uncomfortable this huge creative rift on set. So one of the things that we keep hearing is that there were fundamental creative differences between Blake as the producer and Justin, the director, which is already a power struggle that is very classic. Right? But this brilliant creator refers to one of a few interviews where Justin emphasizes the importance of making sure that this character is to a certain degree likable, even though he's the bad guy. Because not only is that character development like 101, the best villains are the ones with origin stories that leave you conflicted about what makes them interesting. It also reflects and honors the complicated reality of partners that commit domestic abuse and violence. Here's the thing, to do otherwise is a disservice to the story and the people it was made for, which is actually what Blake Lively has been trying to do by making the movie more palatable, by marketing it as such, a lighter rom-com with florals. And for somebody that has already demonstrated in multiple interviews a lack of understanding when it comes to the craft of acting itself, saying things like, I'm not the type of actor that can act unless I produce, seeming kind of oblivious to the fact that talking about sourcing your own wardrobe for a character is very much you making the character you and not bringing yourself to the character if that makes any sense. Her disregard or not understanding the importance of why certain roles like intimacy coaches are there on set to begin with, it would make sense that on a very basic level that it would make her uncomfortable for the villain to be portrayed as likable. Because if we don't have the bandwidth to comprehend the nuance of some of this heavier, more fragile material, if we are approaching it on a very surface level to the point to where we can market it and make it commercialized, it's consistent then that it would make you uncomfortable trying to portray the bad guy as the good guy. It's scarier, it's not as black and white, and it makes you more uncomfortable, which is exactly the experience, the complicated experience of domestic violence survivors. The big picture we're seeing, in my personal opinion, is that Blake was just really in over her head here. This analogy I can think of as someone wanting to make a movie specifically about police brutality and then not wanting to make the police brutality seem at all bad. And from everything we've seen in her own words, that is the direction that she wanted to take this. A big, beautiful summer movie, as she put it in her own words. I want to mention really quickly, when it comes to trying to comprehend the rift and the sides that are being taken in this whole thing, we talked in the last video about not underestimating the power of what a machine Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are and how this Honestly, this profession is so much about networking. We have to consider that it's widely been assumed that Blake will actually direct it. It ends with a sequel, with Justin himself suggesting that she should direct it because he will not be returning to his role. Now, just to remind us of the power dynamics that go into job security as an actor and how common it is in a network-driven industry, 
to be forced to take sides and make moral decisions that might seem voluntary, such as unfollowing someone that are actually covertly coerced. Listen, to stand in your own truth when you get unwillingly swept up into two sides of a drama is almost impossible without risking getting blackballed. You have so much more to lose by being personally outed from Blake's professional inner circle than Justin's. It's just how it is. Again, please refer to that video for context. But the irony here is this. You have a celebrity who is minimizing the experience of actual domestic violence, manipulation, abuse of others, while simultaneously wanting to be heard and believed and talk about her own experiences of alleged abuse on set that we still don't have any evidence for, leading a lot of people tempted to respond to her allegations of abuse the same way that she has responded to DV survivors who have actually experienced abuse. You're a survivor. You'll get over it. Why do we need to focus on it so much? And again, at the end of the day, the point is, I don't think Blake Lively is lying about feeling uncomfortable. I just think the fact that she feels uncomfortable means that maybe she wasn't the right person for the role and she wasn't ready to produce yet. Those two things can be true. You can feel unsafe and that can be totally valid while actually being safe if you're not used to working in these type of more delicate environments. Truly, at the end of the day, I don't think Blake Lively is untalented. I don't think Blake Lively is lying about being uncomfortable. I think she's just out of her league when it comes to the depth required to perform, handle, and even fully understand material mature as this. And I think she's at best demonstrated an embarrassing naivete that she's not even aware of when it comes to everything that she has said about being an actor in the creative process. You know, I don't think she's untalented again, but I do think that she's been a really clear example of what it can look like when a performer refuses to acknowledge their own limitations and projects that ineptitude onto others. She's proven herself to be easily triggered by situations that are inherently neutral in multiple interviews, whether it be demonstrating hints of hypersensitivity and dare we say a little bit of fat phobia to someone trying to well-meaningly compliment her pregnancy or arbitrarily and illogically seeming to lash out on the very people that she made the movie for by responding to a question that an interviewer had to her about how people who have shared these experiences and relate to the content of this movie should talk to her about it if they want to. Going on this weird performative rant where she talks about, well, maybe she should just location share and making them seem like weird boundary pushers when for all intents and purposes, this is why you made the movie. Which again, is just the clearest tell that she did not make the movie for those reasons. She made the movie for herself and for her business and for commercialization, for the clout of a possible Oscar. Which also, real talk, does not mean anything and does have has nothing to do with how good an actor is. Not to take the credit away from those that deserved it, but award shows, Tonys, there's so much more that goes into it. Again, when it comes to things like accusing your scene partner of holding a kiss too long, when you, there were intimacy coaches or whether or not you appointed yourself as an intimacy coach in that moment, you're inferring that that person is actually not acting and that to a certain extent they're just coming on to you, which could be the case, but is quite often you not being in character. From her own words, she said, if I don't have producer control, I'm not the type of actor that can just put on clothes and transform. They're all painting a very big picture of someone who is very much disconnected and removed from the reality of the craft and the industry itself. This could all change if we get more information about Justin. But again, being fat shamed is not the same thing as feeling fat shamed. Because unless people are calling you fat and being vindictive and malicious, Having a partner, whether it's a dance partner or an acting partner, struggle and take the proper steps necessary to able to protect their health while lifting you during the physicality of a scene, that is neutral, however sensitive. One could say that Blake is in fact calling herself fat. Do you understand what I'm saying here? It's not about fat or not. I said this in the last video. It's just about the problem solving. You are the one that brought all that into the situation. Again, unless we get more information. It just really feels like a giant meta case of not only weaponized feminism and manufactured outrage, it just, and I'm gonna have to say it, seems kind of like a case of white woman tears, especially in the fact that we are somewhat weaponizing the very things that we are refusing to talk about. But what do you think?